Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, as this week we reach number nine in my series of twelve tales of terror. Once more, too, I have delved into the science of numerology to find that the number nine is associated with the making of spells. So, what could be more apt than to find that our story today takes us to that land of mystery and spells, Wales. I've always suspected that Wales is a magic land, where the abnormal is an everyday affair. <laughs> I suspect, too, that most of us have harbored a secret dream of a sudden windfall, a win on the pools, or perhaps the death of a distant and hopefully not too loved relative. This windfall came suddenly to David and Helen Hollis. Ladies and gentlemen, I invite you to mind well the tree. You're quite sure I can't press you to another glass of sherry? No, thank you. Oh. Uh, Mrs. Hollis, then. Oh. <clears throat> well, now. Mr. Wainscott, it's hmm? been a long and tiring journey, if we could get to the matter in hand. Ah, oh, yes, I, I quite understand. But to business, then. <clears throat> the state of the late Miss Hester Amelia Parget. To my nephew, David Hollis, I do bequeath the residue of my estate, both realty and personality. The latter to include my home, which he has in fact named Elm Tree Cottage in the county of Monmouth. <clears throat> and these are her own words, I would stress. To be his and his heirs in perpetuity. <clears throat> At a rough estimation, the estate should amount to something over £80,000. Darling! Mm, quite. There is, however, one small proviso to the bequest, a kind of uh, codicil, in a manner of speaking, not legally witnessed and therefore not legally binding. However, here we are. It was written on the envelope that contained her will. David? Hmm? Mind well the tree. In her own hand, her very last direction. We have her doctor's word for it. But what does it mean? Oh, a wandering of the mind, or Elm Tree Cottage. Miss Paget was a keen horticulturist. Perhaps just a final expression of, how shall I put it, tender concern? That it shouldn't be cut down? Perhaps. I can't work out why the old dear should decide to bestow all her worldly goods on me. A couple of hundred quid. The old painting to remember her by, perhaps, but... Her only living relative. So? But you used to visit her. I've visited my dentist more often. Well, then she must have taken an instant shine to you. She hardly had time to make up her mind one way or the other. One of the first partnerships I worked for was with a firm in Bristol. My mother had often mentioned her, so one weekend, instead of heading for the bright lights, I ventured into darkest Wales and paid a call on Aunt Hester instead. That's all. Did you go back often? Well, why'd you ask? Shouldn't I? No. No, I... No, I, I did go back once or twice. Or, oh, half a dozen times at most. Why? Why not? It simply amused me to, I suppose. Until? Until it stopped amusing me. Silly old woman. I see. By the way, uh, don't let the cottage tag deceive you. It's a damn great barn of a place. I'll have to burn a ruddy elm to stop us freezing to death. All done, then, is it? Not another crumb, Mrs. Roberts. Just Gwen will be best, if that's all right with you. Of course. Gwen and Shun it shall be, then. Me doing the housekeeping and my Shun, gardener, handyman. Jack of all trades, if it comes to that. Anyway, 
partial to my Welsh cakes, I'm glad to see. Delicious, Gwen. David? Oh, fine. Yes, fine. Fresh batch this morning, wasn't it, Sean? Oh, yeah, yes, like you say. Of course, he keeps telling me I'm wasting my time. But I had the feeling you'd be arriving today. Well, that's it, then. Um, uh, oh, uh, Sean, something to ask. Give him land to drop in quid, Robert. Only uh, if any luggage you want taken up. No, no, thank you. Actually, I did pack a couple of overnight cases. Did you? They're in the boot. It is open. Mindanulani instruments, Miss Esther, I went. Well, where else you think, then? Of course, Miss Esther's room. Mrs. Roberts, is there a phone? Oh, there is, yes. Only recent, sir. Doctor insisted when Miss Esther got taken poorly. Uh, well, then. Studies first on the right. Thank you. David! There's no need to look like that. You may have packed your cases, but the world doesn't stop for Welsh cakes. Uh, just wait there a minute, Mum, and I'll draw these curtains back. There we are now. Oh, drat. I asked that shun particular to open the window. Oh, it's a beautiful room, Gwen. Miss Esther's. She used to sit here near the window hour after hour, especially towards the end. That garden, a real love. My shun always tended it like it was his very own. I'm sure my husband and I will appreciate you both just as much as Miss Hester did. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Hollis busy at the moment, is he? Mr. Hollis is always busy. Can you see the famous elm from here? Uh, the elm? Oh, come along, Gwen. Elm Cottage, remember? Well, then. Yes. Just see it right at the bottom there. You can see it sticking out from that little spinny. Oh, I see it. But surely... It's dead, isn't it? Dead and rotten, Mum. From long before my shun and me come to work here, he was always on to Miss Esther about having the old thing cut down. Hazard as well as an ice or the way he put it. She never would hear of it. How strange. How very strange. Uh, Mum? There's no reason why I shouldn't tell you, Gwen. Miss Hester actually mentioned it in her will. The tree? From what her solicitor told us, it must have been practically her last request. She asked us to look after it, to tend it well. Anyway, we naturally assumed we'd find the thing alive and thriving. Yes, you would. Just a last-minute flight of fancy, I suppose. Well, if we've uh, finished up here... David, what on earth is going on? Nothing's going on. I just told the man to put my stuff back in the car. But I thought... Yes, well, I'm afraid I'm needed up in town. But... You thought we'd be staying over. The notion was yours, my love, not mine. Any particular reason? Well, in the very first place, it wasn't part of the arrangement, was it? Not my plan, anyway. We finished our business at the solicitors, all signed, sealed and delivered. Then I simply assumed, never having been informed to the contrary, we'd be homeward bound. But an overnight stop. I don't understand you behaving like this. Don't we discuss things any more? I'm sorry. I just got carried away. Can we discuss them now? No. I'm sorry. I must get back. Any particular reason? Business. Just business. All right. A lack of empathy with the place. That suits you? It's just as beamed and gloomy as I'd always remembered it. All chintz and horse brass and be anything else then, ma'am? They were only doing their best to make us feel welcome. I'm sure they were. And I can see the place will suit you down to the ground, away from it all, the perfect writer's retreat. Oh, I'm staying, am I? I have to get back. I assumed you wanted to stay with your overnight banks. What if I decide to come with you? Fine. Are you? No. I want to get to know the place. Right, then. When will I see you? A couple of days. I'll try and make it in a couple of days. Bye, then. Gwen? Gwen? 
How oh, that is. Oh, I was just going to bring you some lemon barley out now, Mum. Uh, you'll find it uh, just on the side there. Gwen, you didn't tell me. The house had another story. Uh, story? Another floor, above the main bedroom. It doesn't, Mum. I happened to glance up in the garden just now. There's a window set high up under the eaves. Oh, that. Well, then, is it an attic or what? Oh, not an attic. Not one that runs the full length of the house, anyway. It's just a... Well? Just the one small, um... Uh, box room, I suppose you'd call it. Why didn't you take me up to see it when you were showing me round? I just didn't think it was worth the climb. There's nothing of interest. Well, would you show it to me now? I'd like to see all the house. Now, Mum? Yes. I'd uh, rather not if it's all the same to you. Why? Why, Gwen? Well, uh, my Sean doesn't like anyone going up there. Why not? Couldn't say, Mum. He doesn't tell you? Gwen? We'll be needing the keys. You see, Mum, just a box room, that's all. Whose room was this, Gwen? Uh, only for somebody in service, Mum. Oh, living, you mean? I believe Miss Esther did have somebody once. And? Not much I can tell. Long before I married Shona come to work for her. Twenty years back, maybe more. How strange. Uh, well, all those years ago, and yet everything in its place. It's still so neat and tidy. A, a feeling, almost as though she just walked out of that door and expected back any minute. Uh, Miss Esther. Yes? Just the way she liked it kept. Was this the girl's trunk, Gwen? Yes. Yes, like you say. C-E-I-N? Uh, Canewen. Canewen Davis was the name, it seems. It's tied with, um, hemp. Mm. As though she were all packed to leave. But did she leave then, Gwen? Oh, yes. She left. Gwen! Tilana! Yes? Uh, Shun. Dan was a failure, mistress. You come down on one instant, do you hear me? Uh, will I leave you then? Oh, I'll be fine. Down in a minute. Mind well the stairs. They narrow on the turning. Kynwin. What a beautiful name. Kynwin Davis. Tied. But not locked. Kynwin Davis. The needle still left in. She must have made them herself. Oh, poor things. Poor things may be, but all her own. A wedding dress, a wedding dress. Beautiful. And about the neck, embroidered flowers. Fine forget-me-nots. Oh, beautiful. And baby clothes? A, a knitted smock? It's beautiful. Forget-me-nots. And a knife. What an awful thing to leave in there. What a dreadful thing. Oh. Oh. How hideous. Two four eight. This is two four eight. Uh, who? Oh. oh yes, sir. I'll fetch her at once, sir. Thank you, Gwen. It's uh, Mr. Hollis, ma'am. Hello, David. About time. No. No, not to worry. What time can we expect you? What? You can't... 
But I don't understand. The last time you rang, you definitely promised that... But it's been a week. Surely... We've all gone to so much trouble. Oh, no, I suppose not. If it can't be helped, it can't be helped. Oh, bye, David. Bye, David. Uh, change your plans, ma'am? I've um, got some work to do, Gwen. I'll, I'll be in the garden. Fine day, ma'am. Yes, I'm bringing my work into the garden. Oh, there ain't that much of a rush to have it done, then? Seeing as I've nothing else to do at the moment. Just leave you to it, then. I'll uh, get my Gwen to bring you out some tea in a bit. Thank you. That would be lovely. <sighs> the servant girl. They were poor things, but all her own. Hot. Oh, oh, it's too hot. Sean, will you help me move this table? Oh, well, there's a bench around the tree. Cool here. Shady and cool. Mind well the tree. Poor dead thing. Hmm. Who is it? Who's there? Kenwin? Is it you, Kenwin? Carved in the bark. True love hearts. Intertwined. Carve your Kenwin, true love's heart, my love. The other name's been gouged out. This sap from a dead tree. Salt. It tastes of salt. Hey, <coughs> man. You'll be all right. Perfect safe now. Oh. It was that branch. Wasn't it? Oh, should have put an axe to the whole thing years ago. And all my stupid fault. When I spotted you crossing the lawn, I should have thought to... Uh... Warn me, Sean. Uh, persuade it, you two. Stay well away from the place. It would have made no difference. I'd have asked the reason, and you'd have made up some cock and bull story, or, or even told me the truth. I'd have gone anyway. To see for myself, it would have made no difference. Uh, I, I... What you tried to do when I demanded to be shown that upstairs attic bedroom, wasn't it, Gwen? Her room. Kynwin's room. Just as she might have left it, except her trunk, all packed and tied for leaving. And why should Miss Hester insist on it remaining just as she left it, untouched for so many years? Why? Uh, Sean? Miss yes, Carrion. Well, Sean knew Kenwin Davis, ma'am. Related, ma'am. Only distant. And then, don't know it all. Nobody know it all. But Kenwin, not just a living servant here, more family, far as Miss Hester concerned. Not often the girl came down into the village, happy to stay here, happy as the day. And always that old song on her lips. Until... Oh, please. All her happiness stopped. Talk and rumour is all to go by, that's all. Young love, but secret love is what they said. When? And her uh, to leave with him and happy ever after. A trunk already packed and final proof of that. Final? What is? No not goodbye. No reason given. Secret love, all right. Best part of the day and night before Miss Esther found her. Yeah. Hanging from that elm. Never to be felt. 
Her memory is, manner of speaking, always so happy, and always that old song on her lips. Mind well the tree, David. Your aunt's last words, David, her exact last words. I'm warning you, Helen, keep this up, and weekend or not, I'm catching the next train out of here. Not tend the tree or care for the tree, but mind. It was meant as a warning. The girl did hang herself from it, David, just the way they said she did. Which is the only sad part of the whole ridiculous business. The rest is pure Thomas Hardy. Oh, Helen, please come to bed. But the danger... ...is only in that rotten old stump. Hester must have known that. I'll have it chopped down tomorrow. Yes. Don't you care? Yes, I care. Come back to London. You don't need me there. Then stay here, then. Oh, I've had it. What a hell of a day. Do you remember her? Hmm? Kynwin, please tell me. Oh. How the hell should I? Twenty years ago? It must have been about the time you were here, visiting. Is this morbid interest? Or something more searching? I'm curious. If the girl was working here, she was a servant. I probably never saw her. David. Okay. If you don't believe me, at least give me the credit for being selective. Besides, under Aunt Hester's eagle eye, there wouldn't have been a cat's chance in hell of anything happening. Satisfied. She was expecting a child. Was she? How do you know? I'm... I'm not sure. Fanciful nonsense. She was a domestic, not one of your heroines. Wind. David. Please, David. Oh, for God's sake. All right, all right. Nothing. What the hell did you expect? Must have been some damn tree. There's nothing near the house. Sleep. For God's sake, get some sleep. There is only one tree. Our tree. Dove is carrier. Helen? You there? What are you doing? They said I'd probably find you here. Did they? I asked what you were doing up here. It's not safe, you know. Those stairs are rotten. Peaceful. Like we've always belonged. What? Peaceful up here. You said, like we've always belonged? Did I? Yes. It's going to be hot again. You can see the tree from that window, can't you? Oh, well, never mind the tree. Will you come down? But we're alone here. Far from the prying eyes. Don't you feel it too? Helen? The two of us. No more to part. What are you talking about? Carry out. What's that you're wearing? That ring? A true love's pledge, my one. My only heart. Helen. Helen. Helen, take the ring off, please. Where did you get it from? Helen, that's not yours. Oh, but it is. No, Helen, stop oh, it. it stop it, Helen. Ah!
Yeah? Oh, Gwen. Oh, only to see what the doctor had to say, ma'am. Nothing broken. Only a badly sprained ankle. The doctor gave him some painkillers. He's drowsy now. Oh, I warned him to mind those attic stairs. Oh, he's waking. Off you go. Shun will be worried whatever's become of you. Uh, but, but you're quite sure you don't want me to stay over the night with you? It will be no trouble. Huh. As for oh, Shun, yeah. I'm sure he could manage her. This is Rombo. No, no, there's absolutely no need, and I wouldn't dream of it. I'll be with him. Don't worry. No, don't leave me with her. On name of God, don't leave me. Night, Gwen. Night, Mum. No. We shall never know if Hester intended to warn David. They found him hanging from the elm, his heart gouged out and lying at Helen's feet. She was oblivious to his blood, to the thick of flies. Had she been possessed by a ghost, or simply her own jealousy? We shall never know. Where she has gone, she speaks no word, only the song, a long dead song in Welsh. It echoes from her cell and on down the tightly locked corridor. In Mind Well the Tree, Nicola Paget played the tragic Helen and Philip Bond played David. Mefanwy Talog was Gwen and Shun and the solicitor were played by Dilwyn Owen. The story was written by William Ingram and directed in Wales by Adrian Morby. My name is Edward de Souza, the man in black, and I hope you will join me next week for another taste of fear on four. <laughs>